Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about judging gap for new drivers working towards a license or those drivers that have got their license and are just embarking on their driving career. This is probably the most essential skill that you need in order to be able to turn safely, left and right turns. When I was asked by Big Money Boss to do a, a video on how to judge gap, I had to give this a fair bit of thought because I was thinking about how we did this when we train in the vehicle and it, actually what we do is if the student misjudges the gap, we simply intervene and through the process of repetition and different traffic scenarios, the student learns when he or she can go. And that's how we did it. So doing a video on this tended to be a little bit more difficult because I actually had to think about exercises that I could give you in order to, for you to be able to learn how to judge gap. So that's what I'm gonna to do today. I got a couple of exercises for you in order to help you to learn to judge gap uh, more quickly and to actually be more precise in learning to judge gap as well get with a veteran driver and drive around with them and have them help you judging gap to make sure that the gap is sufficient when you're making your left and right turns so stick around we'll be right back with that information Hi there smart drivers welcome back rick with smart drive test talking to you today about judging gap we're standing out here on a highway where the speeds are in excess of 100 kilometers an hour 60 miles an hour and in a lot of instances people are doing 70 75 110 even sometimes 120 kilometers an hour across this highway now i stood down at the intersection and i was judging gaps and it took about 10 seconds i wanted a 10 second gap before i pulled out of this intersection on a right hand turn to get my vehicle going and get it up to speed in front of the traffic that was down there. So what you do is you just simply come out to an intersection that you're having difficulty judging gap and start counting when you see the vehicles back off in a distance at a landmark. So pick a landmark, a traffic sign, the end of a concrete barrier, whatnot. So 10 seconds on this intersection is way down there at the concrete barrier just by that green sign. You may or may not be able to see that in the camera. So that's one of the exercises that you can do is simply go to the intersection that you're having difficulty judging gap and start counting and figuring out how long it takes a vehicle to get from a certain distance to where you are. The more you do that, the more this will become second nature and it will be easier for you to judge gap and know how long it takes you to get out into an intersection. Now the other thing you can do on a left hand turn is do what we call meeting the gap. And when the vehicle is coming through on the gap that you know that is going to work for you to get your vehicle through and around the intersection, you can start moving into the intersection and gaining speed with your vehicle before you actually start to execute the actual turn. That way it's going to cut down the amount of time that you're in the intersection and doing your left hand turns because you've got a lot more distance to travel through an intersection on a left hand turn. So we call it meeting the gap. You start moving forward as the other vehicle is coming through and once the vehicle clears the intersection then you can turn and you've got a bit of speed. Now this is even more important in bigger vehicles. The bigger the vehicle, the more you have to judge the gap, the more you have to stay back on the left hand turn. That way when you start to see the gap, the vehicle's coming, you can move forward and gain speed. And if you're in a manual transmission, you can also start shifting gears. That way you're not going to be limited to your speed when you go through the intersection because you're going to be in the appropriate gear to go around the corner at some speed and make the left hand turn. So that's another way you can compensate for it. Same thing on right hand turns. If you've got a slip lane, stay back a little bit. That way when you see the gap coming, you can judge that gap and start moving forward and then simply turn in behind the other vehicle. So that's another way you can do it. So what we're going to do is go down to some intersections here in town and we're going to judge, uh, do the counting exercise and figure out how far away the other vehicles need to be. Now one more point about judging gap for vehicles at intersections. The smaller the vehicle, the more difficult it's going to be to determine that vehicle's speed. Motorcycles and bicycles are now coming out that we've got spring coming on and it is more difficult to judge the distance and judge the speed of motorcycles and bicycles because they're smaller vehicles and it is difficult for us to discern that because spatial orientation is essentially what you're trying to do with your ability to judge gap and that is a right brain exercise and if you want to learn more about spatial orientation and right brain exercises look at the book uh, learning to draw on the right side of the brain she talks about 
uh, right brain activities and spatial orientation because that's essentially what you're trying to do. So have a look at that. As well, work with a veteran driver. If you're having difficulty judging gap, go out with a driving instructor and do some work at complex intersections and on highways just determining gap and determining when it is safe for you to go because as I said it's a lot more difficult for me to do this in a video than it is to do it in the car and teach you at different situations and in at different intersections as the traffic is ever evolving because it's difficult to get a perspective in the camera as it is in a vehicle and actually being there in the situation. So the more practice you get, the better you're going to be at this and work with a veteran driver, work with a driving instructor and they'll be able to help you judge gap and as well know the amount of time it takes you to get through an intersection and practice that go to an intersection and, and see how far away the cars are and how long it takes them to get to the intersection from a fixed landmark so we're going to go to another intersection here and we're uh, going to do some of that exercise in the uh, urban center here and moving out onto a big road at high speed the speed limit is 90 kilometers an hour on this road it's 90 kilometers an hour 55 miles an hour this is a very busy road and we have a big gap 1001 1002 1003 1004 1005 so this is more difficult because you have to judge the traffic from both directions. And we got a good gap on this side, but not on the other side. There is a traffic island out there, but I don't want to be working on the traffic island just today. So we need probably half a kilometer, a good quarter mile down to the right here to get out there and get the vehicle up to speed. So we need the same on both sides. So you need to wait you need to be patient, especially on these bigger roads with much higher speeds. It takes you a long time in a passenger vehicle to get out there and get up to speed. And as you can see, I'm sitting here for quite a long time because one side clears and then the other side has traffic. Never risk this. Always take your time, wait for the gap, get the gap that you need because you don't want to be ran into by one of those big trucks because they'll just basically run over you and leave you as bits and pieces on the roadway. So we get one more car on the right here and we can probably go after this little bunch of traffic here. And yes, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, and I've got the fuel pedal right on the floor. And I'm at the speed limit, so that was about 8 seconds, I believe. I'll time it in the post-production and see how long that took me to get the vehicle up to speed. Now, obviously, a lot of you are going to have vehicles with much bigger engines than this one. This one's only got a four cylinder in it. So you're going to be able to get up to speed much more quickly than this vehicle was able to. Quick review of judging gap. Smaller vehicles are more difficult to determine their speed, so motorcycles and bicycles are gonna be harder to judge. As well as speeds increase, it's also harder to judge gap. 
So know that when you're out highways and high speed roads and those types of things, it's going to be harder to judge gap. In town, you need five to eight seconds for both a left and a right hand turn. Out on the highways, you're going to need 10 to 20 seconds, depending on your vehicle and how big the motor is and how fast it can get up to speed. As you saw here in the video on the left hand turn out on the highway when I was coming off a stop sign out onto a high speed highway, I had to sit there for a long time because I need a gap on both sides to be able to make that left hand turn. So be patient, wait for the gap. Don't get pressured by other vehicles, especially when you're a new driver because you're susceptible to that social pressure of other vehicles on the roadway. So don't get pressured by other vehicles. Take your time and go when you feel it is safe. As well, when you're coming through left-hand turns, as this complex left-hand turn here at this intersection, you can begin to move forward and meet the gap in the intersection. That way you're going to get some speed. And this is more important with larger vehicles that you have to stay back a little bit so you can get that speed, shift a couple of gears, and then expediently clear the intersection as, as quickly as possible. Work with a veteran driver and he or she will be able to help you with the gap if it's too low. As I said, it's easier in a car to teach you this than they can intervene and say, no, no, the gap's not enough, don't go. And as you get more exposure to more uh, traffic scenarios, different intersections and those types of things, you're gonna get experience and you're gonna learn how to judge gap because gap is a spatial orientation. You're, you're determining speed, you're determining the size of the vehicles and how far away those are. As well, come out to the intersections like this one here Start counting, pick a fixed object off in the distance. When the vehicle goes past that fixed object, see how long it takes them to get to the intersection. That way you can start determining if you have a safe gap or whatnot. Because you need five to eight seconds in town, you need 10 to 20 out on the highway, on high speed highways that are in excess of 90 kilometers an hour or 55 miles an hour. Question for my smart drivers. Have you made a turn and misjudged the gap? What were the consequences? Did the vehicle just brake aggressively that you turned in front of and <laughs> told you you were number one? Leave a comment down in the comment section there. All of that helps out the new drivers working towards their license. I'm Rick with Smart Drive Test. Thanks very much for watching. If you like what you see here, share, subscribe, leave a comment down in the comment section. As well, hit that thumbs up button. Check out all the videos here on the channel if you're working towards a license or starting a career as a truck or bus driver. Lots of great information here as well. Head over to our website, great information over there and awesome online courses that you can purchase. In May 2017, we're releasing Air Brakes Explained Simply. It's an air brake manual to help you pass your CDL license. Actually, it's going to make sure that you do, in fact, pass your CDL license. 100 multiple choice questions. For the CDL air brake questions that you will be asked on a theory exam. So look for that in May 2017. Thanks again for watching. Good luck in your road test. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great day. Bye now. Man, some stinks in here. Must be the dump. Boom. I'm Rick with Smart Drive Test. Thanks very much for watching.